Hello! <laughs> and welcome to One Voice Live, where we talk about one voice, what it is, and how it fits into the world of singing. I am your host. That's right. I'm your host, Natalie Rankin. Uh, Yay! Yay! I'm so excited right it's now. It's my first show. <laughs> um, and here I have with me the one we know and love. This is Alex Zito, certified one voice coach and master performer songwriter extraordinaire um and she is joining me today for placement part two this is show number 46 <laughs> oh um and it's a really big day not only because it is my first show mm-hmm. but uh because we are introducing a theory today that has never before been spoken about on our social media so really excited to get into that Heck yes Ooh, let's do it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Oh, we're ready. Okay. I need a sip of tea. Me too. All right, let's do All this. Right. Mugs of tea. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Happy for show. Yay. We're so cute. Amazing. Okay. <sighs> I feel nervous. Let's do it. Okay. Um, so first we're going to sum up what we determined last month in placement part one. Um, if you haven't watched that yet. Go do that because we're going to say words in this one that we said before last month. Um, And it's, you know, really quality content, I would say. I agree. Uh, If I do say so myself. All right. So let's sum it up. Um, What did we determine about placement last month? So the first thing we determined is that you can't actually play sound. You can only create sound and then shape the sound using your vocal track shaping. Exactly. Yes, Mm -hmm. ma'am. We also determined that placement is what we call a bundle term. Mm -hmm which we don't like to use in one voice because they're not specific enough for us and they're not actionable enough for us. So another example of a bundle term would be belting, mixing, breath support. These are all ideas that you can't do. You can't do breath support. There's many actions that go into it. So we like to separate all those actions and get really specific about what we're actually doing, what's actually happening. Um, What else did we determine that we can control, yes, that we can make conscious choices about our creation, AKA weight, and our shaping of the sound with our vocal tract. And that's normally what people are talking about when they mean, when they're talking, when they mean placement, when they mm-hmm. say placement. <laughs> Take a breath. <laughs> okay. Can I just say, I just have to pause for a second. Let's just take a second. This job that she's doing is nerve wracking. There has not been a single One Voice Live that I was not nervous for. Like 40, however many, 45 five of them, uh, minus a few because Michael took over. Um, but it's like a lot of power. Yeah. It's a lot of power. So you're already doing great. My face is so hot. <laughs> it's so interesting how our bodies react under stress. You're um, right. Wow. Yeah. What a wonderful observation. <laughs> but anyway, you're doing great. Okay. And I'm here. Oh, thank you. And I've been here before, so I it's feel true. you. I feel you. Does your face get hot? Absolutely. Okay. My face got hot. I like would black out. <sighs> yes. The screen would be going. I'd see the numbers. Like it's we've like... been going for three minutes and forty seconds. And I'd just be like, I'm on the ride, <laughs> and there's no getting off. So I totally am with you. Thank you. Yes. Can you hear that? Of course. Okay. Who? All right. So when people say placement, they're asking normally for a different weight and a different vocal track shape. Um, so that's what we broke down last month yeah so i think that covers everything we determine we control our weight and our vocal track shaping to get good placement right placement mm-hmm. um so we have everything we need right or do we or do we mm-hmm. let's break that down shall we <laughs> all right so we're gonna do a singer scenario um alex you will be the singer mm-hmm. um so imagine you are singing Look at me now from Andrew Lippa's The Wild Party. Great. Brilliant score. Um, And everything's going well until well. You quickly learn to plow. Okay. So you've chosen, remind me, uh, what vocal tract have you chosen for this song? I'm aiming for a neutral vocal tract. Neutral vocal tract? Okay. And a heavyweight. And heavyweight, mm-hmm. loud volume. I'm loud assuming. volume. Awesome. Okay, cool. So it seemed like neutral vocal tract was a win up until learn to plow, and we got a little hot, a little 
okay. splatty. We got a little morphed okay. there in our vocal tract shaping. So mm-hmm. remember that you have full control over mm-hmm. vocal tract weight, um, and you've made those conscious choices. So just try to remember that on um, learn to plow. Okay. All right, learn ahead. to plow. Learn to plow. Mm-hmm. Plow. <clears throat> and quickly learn to plow. Okay, uh, awesome on the shaping. Seemed really relaxed, really neutral. Mm-hmm. The weight was a little... Yeah, I, oh, I got light. light. Right? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, okay, so you feel like those are the only two choices, really. You either flip too lightweight or you feel like you have yeah, to. Yeah, I feel like I need that to, to keep the weight up there. Interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and scene. Uh, all right. So something's missing, clearly. Mm-hmm. The goal is to have relaxed, neutral vocal tract all the way up for the whole song Mm -hmm. uh, and a heavy weight and a loud volume. And it feels like we came to a fork in the road and we had to either do one or the other. Mm -hmm. And spoiler alert, like that was me. (laughs) That like literally was me having those two options in the past and not understanding why it was so difficult. But more on that later. Mm -hmm. I feel like... Past me and also current, most people could totally relate to that. Yes. Where it's like, I either have to flip. This is what I used to say. That's when I flip to my mix. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. That's just like when I choose to sing lighter. Um, <laughs> cool. Yeah. So this is where the resonance points theory comes in. Oh, really exciting. So before we go into the theory, I want to get really specific and on the same page about what we're talking about when we say resonance. It's one of those words that sort of gets thrown around, um, used to describe people's volume, maybe people's vocal tract shaping. Also, resonance happens in a lot of places. It happens in your body, mm-hmm. and it happens um, in the room that you're singing or speaking in, and it happens in other people's bodies when the sound gets to them. So we got to get specific about what we're talking about when we mean, when we say resonance. Mm-hmm. We are talking about primary resonance points. Meaning, where the resonance happens first. Everything after where the resonance happens first is uh, referred to as secondary resonance. Okay. So the the buzzy feeling I get in my body, the sound filling the room, and the sound resonating after that, um, that's all referred to as secondary resonance. So we are talking about primary resonance points. Mm -hmm. So we create the sound and then the very first place it resonates is that resonance point. Yes. And that's what we're talking about. Yes. Great. Super important. Okay. Now that we're on the same page about that, let's get a little more specific. Um, So the resonance points theory states simply that resonance follows pitch. Resonance follows pitch. So let's test that. Um, Alex, Mm -hmm. I would like you to, on a we vowel, on a lightweight, at a quiet volume, start on a note that feels low for you and slide all the way up to a high note and all the way down. And what I want you to feel or try to pinpoint is feeling the resonance point move up with the pitch and then back down with Great. the pitch. Very yeah. nice, cool, okay. So what did you feel? I felt it move, the pitch moved up with, along with the resonance point and then mm. back down. Awesome. Okay, cool. So try this at home. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. On a light weight, just like you did on mm-hmm. a quiet volume, on a wee vowel, pick a note that's low for you, slide up to a note that feels high and slide on back down and you'll feel those sort of buzzy feelings rise and then come back down. So the resonance is following the pitch. This is also something I like to point out. Um, Originally, old terminology, chest voice, head voice. Mm -hmm. Why did we call it that? Because we felt resonance lower and then we felt the resonance move up. So we were like, oh, so this is a voice and this is a voice. Call it it where it is. Yeah, exactly. We felt low notes low. We felt high notes high. And now we don't um, describe the voice based on resonance anymore. We describe the voice based on function here in the world of one voice but i just thought that was interesting to point out Mm -hmm. they were onto something chest voice head voice the resonance was following the pitch Mm -hmm. cool all right so what's next notes Mm, we did that we did that (laughs) (laughs) 
Okay. Resonance points moving up. Yes. Next page. One page down. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Now we have a slide. Are you ready? Ooh, baby. Okay. Let's getting, uh, we're getting a little more specific here in the resonance points theory. So there are three spaces in our skulls where the resonance points can happen. The lowest being the oral cavity. So everywhere from your larynx to your hard palate, the roof of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Then we have the space behind the soft palate. And then up at the highest uh, place where the resonance point can be is the nasal cavity. Alex, anything you want to point out about these? Yeah, so something that is important is the size of each of these spaces. The oral cavity is big. <laughs> it is the largest <laughs> of the spaces. And then behind the soft palate is a tiny, tiny, tiny space. Mm. Uh, and then the nasal cavity gets a bigger again. Um, and I think it's really important to point out because um, for many singers, and this was me, uh, low notes were fine high mm. notes extreme high notes were great yes it was this like in between space that was really really tricky and i think for a lot of us it's because we're resisting this tiny feeling behind the soft palate and we don't want to resonate there so we're resisting that feeling yes um yeah yeah really good point um and looking at it it makes so much sense it's a really comfortable place to stay with the sensation of resonance point happening in the oral cavity um, not only because it's where we speak, but it's also the largest space and able to be manipulated. Um, and we feel like we were talking about secondary resonance. We feel it down in our chest. We feel mm -hmm. it in our throat. There's a lot of places where we feel the sound bouncing around and buzzing. Mm -hmm. And that helps us feel, I think it helps us feel like we're in control. Oh, totally. Of the sound. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And just, you can't, um, underestimate the power of singing where you speak and like the safety mm, that yes. you feel from going like hey what's up hey and now I'm singing and it's like <laughs> it's all the same thing absolutely uh so much more than if you're singing like an f in head coordination and you're trying to like <laughs> search for that feeling yeah. yeah it's not gonna feel as normal no, as no, no, no. the resonance point being in the oral cavity awesome okay so let's test this one more time let's test the resonance following the pitch so one more time, Alex, mm -hmm. if you would demonstrate. We know now that the resonance point is going to start on the low note in the oral cavity. And then the resonance point shifts up and a little bit back to that space behind the soft palate, blooms up into the nasal cavity, and slides on back down along with the pitch. So go ahead and try this again along with Alex. We... Amazing. Cool. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about why we use a light, quiet we initially to start to feel those primary resonance points. Yeah. So as we were talking about before, resonance versus resonance points, you will feel other resonance in your body um, that are not the resonance point that we're looking to feel. Mm -hmm. And the quieter you are and the lighter weight you are, um, the less likely you are to get distracted by those secondary, the secondary resonance. Uh, and the more likely you are to actually feel where that resonance point is moving uh, so you can pinpoint it. Yeah, makes sense. Because yeah. the more sound we create, the higher the volume, the heavier the weight, the more the more things are going to start to buzz mm -hmm. and the less we'll be able to feel that initial, the primary resonance point, which is what we're interested in. Totally. Cool. You can think of it as like a loud bass bumping in a car. Mm. When it's at a low volume, you oh, don't yeah. really, if you're outside the car, you can't really hear it. The higher it goes, you can just hear the <laughs> and that's similar to how our bodies resonate as well. Totally. That's I just a, thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> good job. Uh, secondary resonance. Rolling down the road. Okay. <laughs> so I got lost again. I got to look at my notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we talk about why it's important? Why? Oh, um, why why it's we? Important? Oh, Yes, we will in just a moment. Great. First, I want to point out, mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to point out, I wrote a little star next to it. Mm -hmm. It's really important to point out that the resonance point will stay the same as long as the pitch is the same, which means the resonance point will stay the same no matter what weight and no matter what volume. So if I'm choosing we, even if I sing it with a heavy weight, with a loud volume, we, the resonance point is the same. Because, because the pitch is the same. 
<laughs> and the resonance only follows the pitch, not the weight. That's important to point out. Okay, and now mm, let's talk about why it's important. So it's like, why the heck does this matter? It's so easy on a light, quiet we to feel the resonance point moving up and like, so what? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so if you have access to middle coordination and you can sing on a lightweight, this will be really, really easy for you. We, uh, but for many singers, when we start to sing on a heavy weight, this is where it gets really, really tricky mm -hmm. because we have associated belting or singing on a heavy weight with resonating in the oral cavity. Yes. So what does this mean? If we get to a pitch that has suddenly moved out of our oral cavity, behind the soft palate or into our nasal cavity, suddenly we either have options, mm -hmm. not great ones. We can either <laughs> flip to a lighter weight, lose the weight that we want, or we have to chase that oral cavity feeling by morphing our vocal tract and like yes. trying to keep, uh, keep the resonance point in our mouth, Yes, which is impossible. Right. Um, but we like to, we like to try. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, Something I like to point out and why, something that I think debunks the idea of placement is that we have, um, it evokes the idea that we have the choice of where to place the note um, and we don't because that's not the way that resonance works. <laughs> um, so it's going to rise even if you don't want it to, but the way that we try to keep that comfortable feeling and that like powerful chesty feeling of belting mm -hmm. um is by over extending our vocal tract widening our mouth i used to love like a good head tilt mm. yeah <laughs> it's really effective and i think it looks cool but when you don't I, have to do it right whenever i wanted to not do that um i i lost out and i had to flip to a lighter weight because i had either or yeah um, all right, so, and that's exactly what this has to do with placement. If we're trying to create consistency in our voices and we have great right placement up until a certain point, and then we feel like we, the only way that we can create those pitches is by keeping the weight and overextending our vocal tract or flipping, <laughs> flipping to our mix. Um, <laughs> it's a lack of consistency. Lack of consistency. And we lose the thing that felt like good placement because yes. last week we determined that so often the thing that feels like good placement or sounds like good placement mm -hmm. is our vocal tract shaping and our weight and then if we get to a place where we have to lose it then we've we've lost everything <laughs> <laughs> you're right that's yeah. right and ultimately like we just don't have to if we keep separating all these things just like we've worked so hard to separate weight from vocal tract shaping which is its own journey yeah. <laughs> we get to keep separating um even further resonance from vocal tract from weight right. they're all these separate things yes and at the end of the day it means we have more options we have more of a choice artistically what we can pick and choose to do in order to tell the story if we're singing musical theater even in pop and rock music everything is really story based and feeling based um yeah it, just, it gives us choices more tools in the toolbox yeah yep um, all right, so yes, we talked about this. We either, we come to that fork in the road where we have the two choices. We either sacrifice the weight and keep our shaping or we sacrifice the shaping and we keep our weight. But something I'd like to point out is that in the world of one voice, we like to separate, like you were just talking about separating creation mm -hmm. and shaping. So one should not determine the other. Absolutely. Um, so here comes the third choice, the more effective, <laughs> comfortable, <laughs> consistent choice. Mm -hmm. um, let's go back to the singer scenario and coach that singer through this. Great. I need my pitch. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm coaching you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. All right. So first, um, I'd like you to do, so do the first choice that you made where we got to keep the weight and the volume and we sacrifice the vocal track. <clears throat> okay. And, and quickly learn to plow. Awesome. Okay. That's choice number one. <laughs> choice number two is not having to sacrifice our vocal tract and our relaxation, but we lose the weight on the way up. Plow, plow, learn to plow. We quickly learn to plow. Awesome. Fantastic. 
don't call us, we'll call you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so, um, so Alex, mm-hmm. would you please, on a light, quiet we, mm-hmm. sing the phrase and tell me when you feel the resonance point move out of the oral cavity? <clears throat> we. Yeah. yeah, definitely on that last one. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So keep, um, what should I say? I should say stay aware mm-hmm. and prepare yourself for losing the sensation of resonance point being in the oral cavity on those last two notes specifically. So we know that that's going to rise. We're going to go back to um, our heavy weight okay. with our loud volume, this time on a wit. Wit. Yes. Wit. <clears throat> wit. Wow. Okay. Cool. Very different. Mm -hmm. Wasn't splatty at all. Mm -mm. Was definitely heavy. Was definitely loud. Awesome. Okay. So now, keeping everything that we just found, we know that the resonance point is going to shift up. We know that we're going to maintain our creation here, creation Mm -hmm. of a heavyweight, and stay loud. Let's go back to the lyrics and put it all together. We, no, you, you. <laughs> we quickly we learned, quickly learned well. all of us together. <laughs> you, you, you quickly learn to plow. Wow. Okay. Can I ask you a question about yeah. that? Yeah. How does that feel compared to the first choice? Uh, it feels so, have you ever had a teacher tell you like, Think of the feeling going, like, raise your eyebrows, like, up the back of your head. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's kind of that feeling minus the need to, like, do weird stuff with your body. But it does, <laughs> like, you feel it creeping up. Yeah. And it really does feel like everything is separate from the resonance point moving. Mm. Yeah. And, like, this is separate from my vocal tract from the, re- like, it really does feel like all these things are separate. Yes. Which. You're just nailing them all at the same time. Yeah. It's really cool and fun. And took a long time. Yes. This <laughs> takes practice, which we'll, we'll, we'll come Yeah. Up. I still, yeah. We'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the personal experience. Mm-hmm. Um, fantastic. Okay. So let's break down that coaching and talk about why we, we, why we, <laughs> why we do each of those steps. So we talked about why we do the light, quiet, we, um, that is so we can feel the resonance point shifting up. We're eliminating that extra sound, the extra secondary resonance to really pinpoint where we feel the shifting so that we know we can kind of track it and be prepared for it when we're adding weight and volume. Um, And then in the second step, we add weight and volume on a with. Why do we choose with? We choose (laughs) with because I I love with. I love with so much. So if our fork in the road, our choices are uh, one of the choices is to overextend your vocal tract to try and keep that feeling in the oral cavity. Wh, wh is a small vocal tract vowel, mm-hmm. and it's really it's impossible to sing wh and open up that wide. Mm-hmm. So, something to be careful of that you're not going wh because that <laughs> isn't wh anymore, and you're you're cheating the vowel essentially. Yeah. But if you're singing wh, it's really 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 hard to try and morph your vocal tract and change where that resonance point wants to go. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Your body will do some silly, silly things to try to keep the resonance point down in the comfy place. Um, It's really hilarious, honestly. Uh, I've had... What we will do. (laughs) I've done it and I've had students do it where they're saying we're here, but it turns into eh back there. So it's like, (laughs) we're... But they've like opened in the back and it's really, really, really awesome. Yeah. Yeah, So our body's just like, no, I want to be here. (laughs) That resistance. I want to talk about... So that resistance and all of that morphing and the work happening in the vocal tract takes so much work. I feel like... When you learn on a way to nail the weight and feel and just let those resonance points shift freely, the effort level is so much lower than yes. what you were doing before. Yeah. The, the, I'd say intellectually, it's really hard at first. Like that yes. effort level is huge. Sure. But physically, once you get over that block, it's so much easier. Yeah. Work smarter, not harder. 
Um, <laughs> all right, fantastic. So yes, and then we put it all together with the words and we try to keep the feeling of wish. Sometimes when you put the words back in, you'll compl- everything will fly out the window and yes. you'll go back to uh, your old choices and go back to that fork in the road. So, But you can use the wit as many times as you need yeah. and just go back and forth and remind yourself like, okay, uh, I don't have to do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and keep reminding yourself what the task is and go back and forth as many times as you need. It will, it will, old habits die hard. Yes. So it will take quite a few, quite a few rounds. Yes. And when remind yourself that your creation, what's happening here, that air restriction can happen as the resonance point is shifting up. Your brain would have you believe that they are intertwined, but we mm-hmm. like to separate them and it's totally possible. Mm-hmm. Um, it just takes practice. I will say one more thing about this. Yeah. Uh, if you're someone who st- already struggles with a heavy weight, uh, you want to get that first. Your yeah. resonance isn't going to help you. Working on your resonance points and um, neutralizing your vocal tract isn't going to help you create a heavy weight. So That's work true. on that first. Nail the heavy weight. We always deal with creation first. And then, and then you can move on to um, resonance and vocal tract shaping. Yeah, good point. I'm glad that I have you here. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, true. All right. So let us, let's dig it. Let's get personal. Okay. Let's, <laughs> um, I know of a specific story where you felt like you were singing a really hard song and you felt like one day you super nailed your placement. This is pre one voice. Mm-hmm. And then the next day you couldn't, couldn't find it again. Yeah. I don't even think this was pre one voice. Oh, I think it was just pre resonance. It was theory. It was very beginning of our <laughs> journey with one voice pre resonance awareness theory. Yes. Um, yeah, I was singing Define gravity in our, uh, in our class at school, go Bobcats, Texas State <laughs> university. And I remember feeling like my placement was on fleek, whatever that meant. <laughs> um, but what I now know was happening is this was totally neutral. I felt like I looked like I was speaking, but I was at a heavyweight loud volume, mm. just absolutely nailing this. And I remember just thinking like, oh, this is what singing is supposed to be. <laughs> I had no idea, but because I didn't know what I was doing, I tried to recreate it the other day based on the feeling and the power I felt. And it was totally out the window and I was back to like morphing and chasing mm. a certain feeling. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point to make that you're not, it's not about trying to recreate the feeling, but knowing what tasks you're doing all at the same time and coming back to that. Yes. Yeah, totally. Helps create consistency. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Was there something else you wanted to share? Um, yeah. Oh my God. This, <laughs> we were doing karaoke in New York and I was singing My Man from Funny Girl by Barbara Streisand. And, <laughs> and it, for whatever reason, Resonance to me was the missing, like truly the missing, like not just in placement, but like in singing in general, even with oh, my absolutely. voice with the, all the information on coordinations and weight and vocal track shaping, there were still, it didn't make sense to me the things I couldn't sing. It was like some mm. songs I would get and I would be a, a, like a superstar and I would feel amazing. And then I would get another song that wasn't higher. Right. It wasn't like it was out of my range. Like same notes. Same notes. But for whatever reason, the order of the notes and the words, I was like, <laughs> I cannot sing this song and it would drive me insane i felt crazy and uh so i felt like an imposter all the time because Mm. people would be like oh you can sing anything and i knew i was like that's absolutely not true (laughs) and just like waiting to be found out and then i was found out (laughs) when i was doing karaoke and i was singing my man which goes it's i think it's like an e or something no and it felt amazing. It was great. We were having a great time. There was a casting director. Uh-huh. I was in the audience at the bar. <laughs> and, uh, and he came over and he was like, hey, I, I'm casting Legally Blonde on a cruise and I would love for you to come audition for Vivian. And I was like, yes, I would love to sing that. <laughs> um, went home, tried to sing the song. And I was like, oh, it's one of those. This is one of those songs that it's not higher than what I was singing at karaoke, yeah. but I can't do it. And it's what I didn't know at the time was it's because it was creeping up. It's especially the nasal cavity one Mm. or no, excuse me, the behind the soft palate, the middle resonance point. Yes. Mm -mm, mm -mm. (laughs) Couldn't, didn't want to. So I was fine here. I was fine here, Mm -hmm. but it lived, it just goes over and over and over again in that song. Mm -hmm. And I went in because I was like, I can't not go. And I, (laughs) I shouldn't have gone. I totally embarrassed myself. Uh, And now years later, I understand why. Yeah. And now you can 
like totally slay Vivian. Yeah. <laughs> so cast me somebody. <laughs> <laughs> um, fantastic. Yeah. I would like to share where I currently yeah, am with my resonance <sighs> journey. Um, I describe it as a game of whack-a-mole <laughs> right now. I feel like I'm really in the with stage right now. What I'm really practicing right now and trying to train my brain to do is to nail the weight and the resonance point at the same time. Yeah. While keeping relaxed vocal tract. Um, as soon as I get into lyrics, old habits come back. Mm -hmm. And I almost have to trick myself into thinking that I'm not singing. Like I'm just producing the pitch. Mm. I'm just doing weight and focusing on resonance point and relaxation. Um, so it feels like whack-a-mole because it feels like as soon as I get one, the other ones like pop up and I have to get those under control. And so it's either, it's like this tug of war where it's yeah. like, Rrr. and I know with, you know, my vocal workouts haven't been um, the most consistent. And I, I really do know that if I was practicing it every week and really, you know, nailing it and sitting down and doing it, putting in the work, I would see faster progress. Totally. Um, yeah, it can be really frustrating. And, yeah. and it's a lot to think about. It takes a high amount of concentration. It really does. Yeah. And I had gotten to a really, really good place with my residential awareness of you. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but for the past couple of months, I, my voice practice hasn't really been um, as consistent as I would like it. I was moving and uh, living with you because you're such a good friend. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot going on. And life happens, and even trying to like find a clip to sing for this, like working on <laughs> resonance, I was just like, "Ooh, like, she's she? rusty." <laughs> like it, it really is the first thing for me to lose. It feels like, yeah, because I have so much history and so much like deep seated, so many deep seated beliefs. Even if I know the truth, my body is still like, "Yeah, but you want it to feel like this, right?" So yes. it still is something I have to like check in with, and I'm in no, in no way like. <laughs> like beyond beyond working on this like this is still something I think about pretty much every time I sing mm -hmm. yeah yeah and it's always the missing link and now that we have presented all of the theories I find that like it's either if you're having problems with a song it's either a resonance points thing a weight thing or a coordination thing totally sometimes it can be solved just by shaping but it's like now you know like you have a place to start let's check this is it weight Let's check this. Is it resonance points? Let's check this. Is it my shaping? Go back to wit. There are so many tools that we have now. Mm -hmm. We have somewhere to start. I feel like um, we have all the ingredients we need for the science experiment. Absolutely. <laughs> and it, it helps my brain so much that it really is oftentimes just like a few things. Mm -hmm. and it's just like rule it out, rule it out. Ah, here we go. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that can happen a lot more quickly in private training, which is something I want to point out. This today is just skimming the surface of resonance points and how specific they are to each person. Um, this is all for most people, but we've run into singers before that don't even really need <laughs> resonance points theory. Laura um, Osnes, like, oh, doesn't need this. Please, yeah. There are, there are many singers who have just luckily uh, sidestep to the belief that it need, sound needs to stay here. Fe mm -hmm. The feeling needs to stay in our oral cavity mm -hmm. and they just move effortlessly. The resonance points just move up and down and they, they're not bothered by it. But that wasn't me. Yeah, I feel like that's not most of us, truly. Um, and I feel like it's so funny that I found with singers who are more trained, mm -hmm. they've had years and years of private training, we have more work to do because we have built all of these silly little fences around chunks of our voices and made rules for ourselves um, that we need to unlearn and un-memorize, yeah. <laughs> un-muscle memory. Mm -hmm. um, so that unlearning and recreating takes time and really diligent practice. Totally. Um, and yeah. the beauty of private training is it is, especially with one voice, it is catered directly to you yes we talk about all the same theories and the way our voices are built and function is the same but the things we've picked up along the way are, yes. are a uh, completely individualized 
bundle of things <laughs> totally. that we've each been like, oh, that worked, that worked, that worked. And we're all just desperately trying to make the sounds we want. Yes. So it takes individual uh, individual attention and plans and exercises to to undo those things. Totally. Like what I need, someone could hear us both sing and say like, oh, you have similar, we've talked about this before. Yes. You have similar voices and similar skill sets, but like our struggles are incredibly different. Yes, absolutely. Um, and so that's part of the beauty of private training. True. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any last thoughts for you on resonance points theory? How do you feel? I feel pumped. I get so pumped about <laughs> resonance. I really do. Yeah. So it, do I. it rocks my world. It truly is the missing link. Yeah. Yeah. I really, really, it just changed my life so much and has allowed me to not only understand why I was so confused mm-hmm. and why certain songs just felt like impossible. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it helped make the impossible possible. Yeah. And those moments when it clicks in, you're just like, oh, that's what it is. It's the feeling of like, (laughs) oh, that's what singing should be. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I always felt like one voice eventually was going to get me to a place where I was like a vocal machine and I could just come in and like be the most consistent. And that's not the case. But those moments for me, when I feel it click in, I'm like, of course, this is true. Yes. Of course. And with my students, I see it all the time. And I'm like, wow, that really works, doesn't it? <laughs> that really yeah. does happen, huh? Totally. Yeah. It's it's so fun. Um, all right. Okay. I think that yeah. that wraps us up on placement and on residence points theory. I think it does. So as for announcements, uh, don't forget to tune in next month on Wednesday, August 26th for our next One Voice Live show. Please follow us on Instagram at Sing One Voice. Um, and you can send us questions and comments there or leave us a comment down below. Um, we love hearing from you. We love answering your questions and interacting with you guys. What else? If someone wants to schedule a free 30 minute consultation, how might they do that? Uh, they could just go ahead and <laughs> visit singonevoice.com if you're ready for a consultation. Um, and to take the next step with private training, we'll get you set up with a coach. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Thank Very you fun. so much for being with of me course. today. Thank you. I did it. You did it. <laughs> it was so great. It was so great. Oh, amazing. Okay. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on One Voice Live. Oh, what did I do? <laughs> so close. So close. All right, let's do that. Let's take okay, it again. Take okay, it so. Wow, this was really fun. Thank you, you so much so for being great. here today. Oh, thank you for having me. Anytime, anytime, this truly. Wonderful. All right, I think that wraps it up for us. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time on One Voice Live.